In the last video, we learned about orthogonal projections onto one-dimensional subspaces. In this video, we look at the general case of orthogonal projections onto n-dimensional subspaces. For this, we'll exploit the same concepts that worked in the one-dimensional case. Let's start with an illustration. We're going to look at a case where we have a vector x that is living in a three-dimensional space, and we define a subspace, a two-dimensional subspace, u, which has basis vectors b1 and b2, which are, for example, this vector, and b2 is this vector. So we write u is spanned by b1 and b2. So u, in this case, would be the plane um, down here. So this is u. So now we are looking at the orthogonal projection of x onto u, and we're going to denote this by pi u of x. So that projection is going to look something like this. That's the projection point. Uh, so this is the orthogonal projection of x onto the subspace u. So we can already make two observations. The first thing is that because pi u of x is an element of u, it can be represented as a linear combination of the basis vectors of u. So that means we can write pi u of x is lambda 1 times b1 plus lambda 2 times b2 for appropriate values of lambda 1 and lambda 2. And the second property is that the difference vector of x minus pi u of x, so this, this vector over here, is orthogonal to u, which means it's orthogonal to all basis vectors of u. And we can now use the inner product for this, and we can write that x minus pi u of x inner product with b1 must be 0, and the same is true for b2. But now, let's formulate our intuition for the general case where x is a d-dimensional vector, and we're going to look at an m-dimensional subspace u. OK, let's derive this result. I copied our two insights up here, and I have defined two quantities, a lambda vector, which consists of all these lambda i here, and a b matrix, where we just concatenate all basis vectors of our subspace u. Now, with this definition, we can also write pi u of x equals b times lambda. Let's assume we use the dot product as our inner product. Now, if we use our second property, we'll get that so pi u of x minus x inner product with bi is now equivalently written as the inner product of b lambda minus x and bi. And this needs to be 0, where I just used the definition of p u of x in here. So now we can simplify this by exploiting the linearity of the inner product. And we'll get b lambda times or inner product with bi minus the inner product of x with bi needs to be 0. And this holds for i equals 1 to m. With the inner product, we can now write this in the following way. We can write this as lambda transpose times b transpose times bi minus x transpose times bi equals 0 for i equals 1 to m. And now we can write this as a set of conditions. And if we summarize this, we would get lambda transpose times b transpose times b minus x transpose times b must be 0. 
Now we need to talk here about an m-dimensional zero vector. What we would like to do now is we would like to identify lambda. For this, we are going to right multiply the inverse of b transpose times b onto the entire equation. And then we get lambda transpose equals x transpose times, so x transpose times b times b transpose b inverse, which then also means we can write lambda as the transpose of this entire expression. We get b transpose b inverse, so this matrix is symmetric, so it's tra transpose is the same as the original matrix, times b transpose x. So now we have identified lambda to be this, but we also know that our projection point can be written as b times lambda. So this means we will get pi u of x as b times lambda, which is b times b transpose b inverse times b transpose x. We can now identify this expression as the projection matrix, similar to the one-dimensional case. And in the special case of an orthonormal basis, b transpose times b is the identity matrix. So we would get pi u of x is b times b transpose times x. The projected vector pi u of x is still a vector in Rd, but we only require m coordinates, the lambda vector over here, to represent it as a linear combination of the basis vectors of the subspace u. We also effectively got the same result as in the one-dimensional case. Remember in 1D we got lambda equals b transpose x divided by b transpose b, and we got a projection point pi u of x, which was b transpose x divided by b transpose b times b. Now, b transpose b is now expressed as matrix b transpose times matrix b, but we now have the inverse matrix sitting here instead of dividing by a scalar. That's the only difference between these two results. In this video, we looked at orthogonal projections of a vector onto a subspace of dimension m. We arrived at the solution by exploiting two properties. We must be able to represent the projection using a linear combination of the bases of the subspace, and the difference vector between the original vector and its projection is orthogonal to the subspace. In the next video, we're going to look at a concrete example.